What is going on, everyone? We're here again with another wave of wire. Today, we're going to be talking about a mon that probably gets slept on the most, I would say. Um, Another mon that hasn't been drafted either season of Big Juice. Now, just looking at its base stats, you can kind of see why. Nothing really big going on here, but... This Pokemon is in tier 2 for a reason. This Pokemon is absolutely absurd, and I'm going to go over why. It's one of the few Pokemon that get access to Quiver Dance, which is big. Bug, Poison, pretty okay typing. Um, poison is good, Fairy Killer, Bug, not the greatest, but... Hit bulky Psychics, I guess, like Uxie, Cress, stuff like that. Um, but it is poison, so if it's not faster, it gets hit pretty hard. But Quiver Dance helps it get bulky, you know what I'm saying? And Sleep Powder. Uh, you just Sleep Powder something, and then you're guaranteed a Quiver Dance. Pretty good. Uh, now what makes this Pokemon extremely good besides Quiver Dance is its abilities. Last week, or a week or two ago when we covered Clefable, same kind of thing. The ability kind of carries this Pokemon. And all of its abilities are really OP. The main one that you're going to be one of using, though, because Venomoth is usually offensive, is Tinted Lens. But I'll go over all three. Shield Dust. Pokemon is not affected by secondary effects of other Pokemon attack. It's basically the reverse of Sheer Force. So if you use Fake Out on it, Shield Dust protects you. If you can't get T-Bolt paralyzed, you can't get Thunder paralyzed, you can't get Flamethrower burned, nothing. It's basically a defensive sheer force, which is really good. Tinted Lens. Probably the best offensive ability you can have in the game besides maybe Protein or Adaptability or Huge Power. Um, it's top 5, top 10 offensive abilities for sure. Pokemon's attacks that are not very effective on a target deal double damage. Now what does that mean? Pokemon, when a moose is not very effective, it does half damage. So, by doubling it, it becomes a neutral hit again. So, Bug and Poison, they get resisted by a lot. Like, Ground resists Poison. Uh, what else? Uh, steel resists Bug, which is pretty big because Poison is immune. Or, po Steel immunes Poison. Um, but those hits now are neutral hits. So, if you get some Quiver Dances off... There's actually nothing that can switch in on you because unless something quad resists like a, uh, I guess like a steel flying, like besides like Skarmory's and Corviknight's, Venomoth runs. It runs house. Um, because again, you get Sleep Hat or something, you get one or two Quiver Dances off, hits that are not very effective become neutral hits. And not much can come in on a neutral hit when you're at plus one or two Quiver Dance. That's really good. It's Hidden Ability Wonder Skin. It's very, very good, but since it's very, very frail, it's kind of sussy. But you can make it work with some sets that I'll get into. Uh, status moves with accuracy checks are 50% accurate when using this mod. So if you have Wonder Skin on, Thunder Wave goes from becoming 90% accurate to 50% accurate. If you try to burn it or sleep it, they go, well, unless you're Spore, obviously, but if you try to Sleep Powder, Venomoth, or if you try to will o -Wisp, Venomoth for whatever reason, or you try to T-Wave it, they all become 50% accurate, so you're basically never statusing it, which is pretty cool. Again, uh, this one's a little bit more risky. I wouldn't say risky, but definitely not as good as Tinted Ones, but on some defensive sets, it can be good. Uh, in the next set... Next set is essentially the same thing, except you just have Substitute with Black Sludge. That way, you can get the sub up and get some recovery back at the same time. Uh, this set is pretty cool. Uh, Boots, it's like a utility set. You can run some bulk with it. Um, Shield Dust, you can get faked out, so you can get the Toxic Spikes up regardless. U-Turn, Roost, Tailwind. Uh, has some access to some other moves like you can dry baton. Obviously, you can't cover dance baton pass. That's been, but you can dry baton pass if you're slower. If you don't want to run U turn, uh, you can morning sun for healing. If you're running like a sun, if you're going against a sun team for whatever reason you like venom off in that matchup, you can run morning sun instead of roost. Um, 
Gets Reflect. Gets Psychic. Gets Stun Spore if you want to run that. Can even teleport out. Whirlwind, it can phase things. Has 100% accurate Toxic because it is Poison type, so that's something to note. Uh, another set. Essentially the same thing except your Sash and your like, max offense frail. This is just so you can guarantee a layer of spikes to sleep on something. Again, uh, kind of the same set as this, but instead of being trying to be bulky, you're understanding that you're probably just going to get hit down to your sash. You're using this as like a uh, toxic spiking or a bomb bay in a way. And then this is like the sussy set that probably won't work at all, but I thought it would be a fun set to at least try. If you're going up against a lot of like a lot of uh, status, like if you're going up against like a Rotomosh or a Jirachi with Thunder Wave, or a um, what else likes the status things? Um, Salazzle with Toxic or Will O Wisp, things that just naturally are just known to status. Wonderskin can come in, and Bright Powder makes it so attacks are on like 10% less accurate. So you can make a move that's already inaccurate 10% less. So that makes status moves against Venomoth are going to go down to 40 or 41%. And even 100% accurate moves are going to be 91% accurate against Venomoth. So this is more of like a meme set, but I think it can still work type up dependent. But really, where Venomoth shines is these two sets, the Black Sludge Sub Quiver Dance set and the Life Orb set. Again, Tinted Lens just makes it so there's actually nothing that can switch in if you get plus two. Even if you get plus one, it can be pretty difficult to kill this thing because again, Mach Punch resisted uh, Ice Shard, it's a neutral hit. Sucker Punch you can, but because uh, it is frail, but it, it's not weak to priority, which is big. Obviously, the biggest thing with Venomoth is that it's weak to rocks, so you really need a good Rapid Spinner Defogger on your team. Uh, Venomoth does get access to Defog, but again, since it's so frail, even if you run something like Boots, you're not really going to be the bulkiest thing because, again, 60 defense, 75 speed def, 70 HP. Again, this set... I wouldn't recommend maybe maybe if it's like good in the type up matchup maybe but really Venomoth it does one job good and does it well and that's either Sash lead with spikes and status or Tailwind or the setup sweeper set with Quiver Dance. Um, this I can understand why I went undrafted both seasons because again it is like a risk sort of. It's a tier 2 pick, which is a pretty high tier pick. And when... Let me, let me pull it up. Like when you have things like Entei, Feraligator, Gengar, Haxorus, Heracross, Hydreigon, Latias, Lanu Lucario, Mianchal, Mew, uh, Infernape, Starmie even, Terrakion, like... When you compare it to the other things in this tier, it can be kind of hard to justify. And that's why Venomoth typically gets slept on. But if supported with a good spinner and defogger, and if it has what, if it can, like, again, steel, like, cor the Corviknights and the Skarmories of the world are really going to wall this thing. Bulky steel types just shut down Venomoth completely. It can't really hit it. So, if you just have a good thing, if you have a way to either trap steel types like a Magnezone that can take them on, or just a really good fire or fighting or ground type that can take them on, uh, it really, really helps Venomoth out a lot. Um, again, this is a Pokemon that you really need to build a team around, which is why it typically gets slept on, but again, Quiver Dance is just one of those moves where... Even if a Pokemon's bad, like Venomoth, it is still very good. Again, there's a reason why it's UU, and there's a reason why it's Tier 2 in our league. Um, it, it's just good. And it's a Grounded Poison, which is always good, because Grounded Poisons get rid of the Toxic Spikes, which is massive. Um, 
Does at least have a good shiny? Okay, the shiny is at least cool too. So you know, it's got a good shiny going for it too. Three pretty good abilities. And it's coverage. Bug buzz, energy ball. Like, it's coverage is not bad. Coverage is not bad. Um, just trying to see. Yeah, it, it's coverage, not the greatest, but it's not bad either. Um, yeah, I think personally, would I recommend a team just like pick it up? Maybe. Again, I think it's one of those Pokemon where you have to build a team around. I don't think, like, there's a lot of Pokemon where you can just throw them on a team and they'll perform. I'm thinking of, po like, let me pull up the list again. Like, when I think of Pokemon that you can just throw on a team and they will just straight up perform, I'm thinking of Pokemon like Amoongus. And, oh, I'm talking about Tier 2. I'm thinking of Pokemon like Amoongus. I'm thinking of Pokemon like the Blade. I'm thinking of Pokemon like Gligar, even. Someone like a Heracross Hippowdon, like Hippowdon more Sand Team-esque. But there's a lot of Pokemon in Tier 2 that just are a lot more plug-and-play. Even a Mimikyu, a Mew, Nidoking, Obstagoon, Primarina, Reuniclus just works on its own. Um, just, there's a lot in Tier 2 that isn't dependent on a team. And I think that is the important part to really understand. And I think that is what co sort of makes drafting a Pokemon like Venomoth risky. And again, I know I've like reiterated the past three minutes. If you surround it with a good team and good hazard support, it's a pretty good Pokemon. I, I would part of like rate it. I'd probably give Venomoth like a B, like a not a B minus, not a B plus, but a B. It's sort of predictable in what it does, but it's good at what it does. And again, you can surprise people with a sash lead, and you can even run a meme set with bright powder if you really wanted to. So that's gonna be the waiver wire this week. Um, a Pokemon that maybe not as strong as the other ones we've covered so far, but I personally think is pretty cool. So. That is Wave Wire. Um, I have an interesting video that I want to record. So, probably going to do that tomorrow or on Monday after the season is over. I'll probably do it on Monday. I think opinions could change. I, I have a video idea in mind that I'm probably going to record Monday. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be the video. I'll see you guys tomorrow on the last day of play.